So Jan Testerstein is could be a service agent, they could be a salesperson. They come in in the morning, open up their user page, and get recommendations of how they should most effectively spend their time today. And what we're seeing here are recommendations generated by Next Best Action, and they're generated from a variety of tactics. And if we look a little more closely, you can see that there's a variety of things going on here. Uh, there's a case here that was recently closed and not followed up. And so Jan's being told to do that. There's also a limited offer of payment relief uh, that's being provided to a customer uh, that where the travel sector was affected. Uh, and then down here, we have a couple of recommendations that are related to uh, Einstein predicting that uh, a customer may, may be uh, in danger of churning and failing to renew. And then the final thing here, there's a fourth kind of message here. It's a message from HR. It's basically, uh, hey, the trading window is closing and there's some stuff you have to learn. Okay, so for example, uh, if I want to learn more about the trading window closing, I can click on that and it runs a flow here. It just has a few, it's really just a placeholder. Um, here, the uh, for the failure to renew, I get a little more data. Why is it in risk of churning out? Uh, and then this flow could continue on and potentially provide a playbook for talking to this customer. So, uh, and as I get done with, as I deal with the uh, with the actions, it will remove them, replace them with other recommendations. Um, and go on and so forth. So far so good. Now one of the cool things about this particular application is that it allows managers to set the priority. And by managers I don't mean in the IT organization. I mean eight the managers of sales teams and service teams and operational teams. So let's go look at what it looks like from Jan's manager's point of view. Okay so we're looking at at, uh, at Jan's manager's homepage. Now he has a flow component on his homepage that allows him to manage tactical priorities. So uh, what he can do is say, I wanna manage the team's priorities. And you can see here that he actually has all four of those categories. You'll remember we had case follow-up let's say we want to take that out and let's say we want to make the renewal risks the top thing and let's take out the limited offer so we only want <coughs> maybe the quarters closing we only want to see uh, renewal risks and have our agent or our salesperson focus on those so he finishes this flow up and now if we go back so the next day Jan comes in she's going to see a different exactly that prioritized set of recommendations so here are the high risk of failure to renew ones and then here are the priority messages from HR so this is kind of cool IT can empower the managers to set the priorities and as new uh, tactics come into play they can be added and show up in the in this list here and be something that managers can choose to add in and sort and prioritize. Okay, so let's take a look at how that was done and go to the next best action strategy that is responsible for it. So what we have here in this strategy is four different generate elements, each of which generates recommendations corresponding to one of the tactics. And so whenever uh, an agent comes in, whenever they refresh that page, each of these runs and determines whether uh, it's got any recommendations to provide. And then the sort is done, and this sort goes and looks at the priorities that were added by the team manager. Uh, and then any duplicates are removed and filtered out, and the recommendations are prepared and delivered. So to add more strength to the the depth of the recommendations these have been implemented uh, using apex classes so the thinking here is you know while there's a lot of ways you can build a strategy 
uh, completely declaratively, uh, it also sometimes is great to tap into the power of Apex. So in this case, we're leveraging you know, the developer, a developer could be adding these tactics and turning them into declarative building blocks that can then be accessed by the generate icon. Uh, the generate basically goes and looks and it can choose from any of the actions that have been made available uh, to Next Best Action in Flow using the invocable action interface. The sorting is done on a field of the recommendation called tactical priority. That's a custom field that uh, this org I just added to the recommendation. If we go over here, we can see that tactical priority is just a custom field that I've added to the recommendation. All right, so let's take a look at a little, take a step back, take a look at how the whole solution comes together. The user comes in the morning and sees this. What is it that they're looking at? They're actually looking at a flow. I think I may have mentioned that before. Let's take a look at that flow. So here's the flow. It's pretty simple in structure. Basically, when that flow runs, the username is taken and it's passed to an Apex action that requests NBA recommendations. The recommendations come back and they're displayed in a flow screen. And the component that's doing all of the work in that flow screen is called Display NBA Recommendations. And this is actually available as an open source component. So you can take this and use it out of the box or start, or start manipulating and moving around. And it's designed to work hand in glove with this action. Uh, and the reason they, they need to work together is because a recommendation is a relatively complex data structure. And when the data comes back from the NBA strategy, it's actually stored in an apex defined variable. And that apex defined variable makes it easy to pass all of the complex information, things like uh, do. Uh, uh, what flow runs when this is this recommendation is clicked? What flow runs when that recommendation is clicked? What's the description? Um, and so this is this cur recommendations apex variable is output by the apex action, and it's input right here by this component. So they work together. Now this apex action is. Uh, passing in a couple of parameters. It's passing in the current user ID. That's critical, of course. It's passing in the name of the tactical plan. This could be a more complicated algorithm. For example, the flow might say, well, let's go find the user's manager. Let's go find the tactical plan with that particular manager's name. Uh, but in this case, I've just hard coded it to a particular tactical plan called service one. And I'm also specifying the strategy name, which is, of course, critical. Which strategy do I want to run? So with that in mind, let's go back to the Apex code. So when that flow calls that action and that action executes, this is what's executing. It's an invocable action. And it starts by pulling out the information like the, uh, uh, the context record ID, uh, that's the user in this case, the number of results, the strategy name, and so on and so forth. Now, what this action then does is it constructs the call to execute the strategy. So this is how this execute strategy, this is how you execute a next best action strategy from Apex. And so it's doing a few things to get the parameters and the inputs in the right format. And when the recommendations are returned by that structure, we then basically map them to a Apex defined structure that we can pass back uh, as a single variable to flow. And so this is where Apex defined resources become very useful. This 
you know, the data structure that is returned by this exec execute strategy call is not that difficult to work with if you're writing code. But what we want to do is we want to enable people to use it in flow. So when I wrote this invocable action, I did this conversion. And by converting from the, the normal natural return structure that comes back from the API to a apex defined type, uh, I was able to return it to flow in a way that's declarative. So what is the apex defined type here? Well, let's go look at map to apex defined rec list. What you see here is you see a variable and it's of this type, NBA recommendations list. So what is an NBA recommendations list? Well, that's an apex type that I created myself. An apex type is just an apex class that is focused not so much on doing stuff but on representing data in some useful schema. So here I have my NBA recommendations list class and I've got uh, on behalf of ID, execution ID, I've got a couple of things that are critical, but the bulk of the recommendations list are the recommendations themselves. And what do we have here? We have another class. So I've got a list of NBA recommendation. So let's take a look at that. And here you can see, if you're familiar with how data comes back from the NBA execute strategy call, this will look very familiar. I mean, it's basically a field by field mapping, um, but it's done by using these Aura enabled annotation. I'm making all of this accessible in flow. And if we go back to the flow, you can see that it's right here. I've got these apex defined variables. I could create a new one select apex defined and here are those apex types with the where the aura enabled enabled this to be visible so we go back here and we're going to pass in all of this information to the strategy execute nba strategy and it's going to execute now this can execute any strategy but we have specifically told it to execute these this one service tactical strategy so it is going to execute this and the first thing it's going to do is it's going to call a different invocable action so remember this is generate sales tactical priorities so this has nothing to do with executing a strategy from outside this is inside the strategy so we're taking advantage we've got two building blocks we've got the building block that we used in our flow that lets a flow run an nba strategy now we're inside the strategy we're going to use another building block to generate the appropriate recommendations So this is another invocable action. It's being it's being invoked from the strategy in this case. And the data that was passed in is being pulled out. And what it's doing is it uh, first it looks at plan type. We're interested in service use cases. It's going to call another class called process service tactics. We can go look at that and process service tactics is actually where we start to use heuristics and algorithms so here for example if we're if we have a tactic of case follow-up this gets processed here and it looks for cases that are closed 
follow-up that's complete not being the case not being true and so forth if we have uh, Einstein renewal risks as a tactic it's going to look for accounts where a certain renewal risk is above a certain value and the days since last follow-up is greater than 30 so I'm encoding into this a lot of different pieces of policy uh, and um, I'm going to stop there. There's a lot more to unpack here uh, because it's combining a number of advanced concepts. Uh, you know, a logical question might be, why not do more of this declaratively? In this particular case, some of these queries could have been done declaratively. Mainly, this is a sample of how you can go beyond declarative when you need it, how you can use Apex to bring in outside information, do more complicated SQL queries, um, and then make it sort of automated so that so you can allow those managers to set the priorities because that part, that manager setting priorities, um, requires a more sophisticated uh, capability and that's one of the places where Apex can really help out. So some advanced functionality here for next best action, working with Flow, working with Apex. Uh, hope you enjoy it.